all for not taking my wife to the hospital? My wife has a playful personality. She teases slash mocks slash laughs at me all the time. Everywhere. During dinner, in the bathroom, at work, when we're intimate and in public too. No matter how serious the situation is, she'd always crack a joke to lighten up the mood. I found this both great and annoying, as certain situations require us to be serious. I quite frankly don't know the reason behind her behavior. My sister suggested that it might be a way for her to cope with past traumatic events like her brother's death. He passed away before we met, and understand how hard this is. We have a five-year-old who's pretty much like his mother. We gave him the nickname Clown because of how he's always laughing and telling jokes and dressing funny. We don't call him that in public though. She just gave birth to our second baby, and ever since she got pregnant, it got worse. Even worse in the past month. She's at home while I work long hours. Every other day, she'd call me during work to ask me something, then suddenly started freaking out telling me the water broke and I needed to get home fast. She's done it twice and recorded our call to listen to it with her sisters and laugh at my reaction. It made me look bad for lying to my employer and telling him my wife went into labor twice. I'd come up with excuses telling him that there was a mistake or something but never tell him my wife lied for the lols. Saturday. I was out working and meeting up with some clients in an area two hours away from home. It's a project we've been working on and the two clients wanted to see it. Suddenly, my phone started ringing. It was my wife. I looked at it and thought that she was at it again and tried to be funny telling me she went into labor. I put my phone on silent. Then I got a text from her telling me that I needed to get home to take her to the hospital, but I just quickly replied telling her to stop. This wasn't a time for messing around, I had a lot of work. And driving two hours just to find she was just kidding was not okay. But in about 30 minutes, I got a call from her sister calling me names for ignoring my wife's calls and that she ended up driving her to the hospital herself. I was shocked. I left work and drove more than two hours to get to the hospital. My wife saw me and cussing me out and telling me to get out. I wasn't allowed in the delivery room. And her mother insulted me, asking me how I could leave my wife home alone and not answer her calls. I felt awful already. I wasn't allowed to see our baby until 10. The entire family called me neglectful a-hole and said I deserve what I got. My parents said I was in the wrong, although I explained that I didn't know. My wife keeps saying I had no right to complain about not being in the delivery room after I ignored her like that and made her feel helpless. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. By her the story, the boy who cried wolf for her to read to the new baby. Maybe the baby can read to her instead. Given how childish Opie's wife is being, are we sure she's past first grade? Not the a-hole. Your wife doesn't have a playful personality. She's a bully, and an a-hole uses your emotional state and lies to you for her own amusement. I like this, yes. Not the a-hole. And you nailed this person correctly. Hard not the a-hole. Jesus Christ, this is the story of the boy who cried wolf. Or the woman who cried baby, I guess? This was entirely an incident of her own making. It is her fault. Yet, Opie is the one dealing with all the consequences once again. Opie just missed the birth of his child because of her actions. I'd be freaking livid with her. Opie's income, I imagine their joint income as she's just had a baby, was threatened repeatedly by her lies. All to humiliate her husband for her own amusement as a bully. Honestly, at this point, I want to fight fire with fire and have Opie tell his wife that he lost his job because of his wife's BS pranks. Tell wife that his boss told him that if it was another false alarm, he was losing his job. And when he left to go to the hospital to see her, he did lose his job. See how funny she finds it losing her income when she has a newborn because of her actions. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole if I don't allow my son and family photos? I, 30 female, have been together with my husband, 30 male, for 15 years and have been married for 7 years. We have had two instances where I have been excluded from family photos. The first time was when we were engaged and my husband's grandmother, 73 female, wanted to take photos of everyone for the holidays. When I situated myself next to my then fiancé, she said, let's take some photos of the biological family first. What followed was 30 minutes of different arrangements of family members while I sat off to decide because I was the only non-biological grandchild there. They took iterations that included spouses of aunts and uncles. 
They took a few photos with me at the end, but everyone was exhausted, so they didn't come out good. The photos that are on display at the grandmother's house are the photos without me in them. When I expressed my frustration to my husband, he explained that his family wanted to ensure they got some sets of the real family first. His words. I explained how hurt I was to be excluded, and he said that it would not be an issue again because we were going to be married. I took this as a sufficient answer and dropped it. Flash forward to summer of 2019. My husband and I had been married for five years and were trying to conceive. We went on a trip with the whole family. They set up a legacy photo shoot. I brought up my fears of a repeat of last time to my husband, but he assured me that things were different now. We were married, we were trying to start a family. I was a member of the family. We took a bunch of photos and I was included in the applicable groups. They took the classic arrangements. Grandparents with grandkids, grandparents with aunts slash uncles and grandkids, grandparents with only their birthed children, aunts slash uncle generation, but no iterations where the spouses were left out if their kids were involved. When grandma checked the photos, she said, let's try a few with just the biological grandkids. I began tearing up and said, you mean without me? My husband pulled me aside and explained that it was only going to be for a few pictures and asked me why I was ruining the photo shoot that was going so well. After arguing for a few minutes, I conceded and walked away. Since then, his grandmother has displayed photos from that trip and I am in none of them. Also, since then, my husband and I have had a son, one male. I have told my husband that in the future, we will have two choices. Either he tells his family that I am staying in all of the pictures, or I leave and my son is also not in them either. My husband says that this isn't fair and causes him to have an uncomfortable conversation with his grandmother. Am I the a-hole here for not allowing my son to be in a family photo that I am obviously not welcome in? Now for the top comments. You're the a-hole. We took a bunch of photos and I was included in the applicable groups. The other spouses included were the aunts slash uncle generation. I am the first spouse in the grandkids generation. Paraphrased from a reply from Opie. They were taking photos of the biological grandkids. You were not a biological grandkid. I'm sure that when they take pictures of the first great grandkids, you will be in the applicable pictures as you already have been. You are attempting to assert yourself into a position you don't hold. Maybe grandma doesn't like you, maybe not. Maybe if you took a step back and examined your behavior to see if making things about you, when they aren't, is a pattern that may push her away, or maybe she is in fact the a-hole, but from what I'm reading here, I gotta read it as you're the a-hole. This is an excellent reply. I agree, you're the a-hole. The people who are voting not the a-hole are not realizing that OP wants to be included in photos because of their age, and not because of their position in the family, which is what the grandmother seems to be doing. You're the a-hole. You are literally throwing a temper tantrum that an old lady wants photos of her grandkids, but not you because you aren't her grandkid. So freaking what? Why Opie would want to be in the picture of the biological grandkids is beyond me. You're not a grandkid. None of the grandkids' parents were in the pictures. And who obsesses about the pictures displayed in other people's houses? Who cares that much? Some old bat didn't include you in the pictures, and what? The next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not letting my in-laws into our home because that's what brother-in-law wanted? My brother-in-law, Jason, is 20 and two years ago he was in an accident that left him paralyzed. He's bound to a wheelchair and barely has any hand mobility, so he needs help with pretty much everything. My wife's parents were hit hard by this and struggled with the pressure of taking care of him. Even though he receives benefits and compensation, in-laws couldn't handle all the doctor's appointments, physical therapy sessions, and constantly caring for him. In the end, Jason came to live with us. Her parents claimed they just needed a few weeks to take a break from caring for him. A few weeks turned into months until he stayed with us permanently. There was a lot of conflict over this. We couldn't believe they just stopped coming to see him altogether, when he was already in a dark place and adjusting to these permanent life changes. We didn't speak with them for a long time. It was difficult to adjust at first, but we're glad he's here with us. Before COVID, we had a care provider stay with him while we were at work, but now that we're home majority of the time, we just take turns. He and I have gotten very close, so we've had many talks about his feelings. 
I know how hard this is for him and how much it hurt when my in-laws pulled out of his life. We haven't had any contact with them at all in over a year. Well, as it turns out, they want to see him again. My wife told me this could be the chance to finally get the family back together and to make amends. She's talked this over with Jason, but he wants nothing to do with them. He's made it clear he doesn't want to see them, but she insists it's important they all talk. Today, they showed up unexpectedly when my wife was out. Jason was in the other room, and apparently they arranged this meeting today with my wife, but got there earlier than the agreed time. They just wanted to have a sit down with Jason, but I didn't let them set food in the house. Honestly, my anger got the best of me, and I shut the door on them when they wouldn't leave. I told Jason they were here. He didn't want to speak with them. They left after 10 minutes. When my wife got home, she was furious. She knows what they did was bad, but this was the chance to make it better, and Jason doesn't know what's best for himself because he's still upset about what they did. We went back and forth on this. She said closing the door on them and refusing to let them see Jason was an ale move, but I feel his wishes should be respected. However, she says his feelings on this are obviously clouded because of what happened, and I prevented him from reconnecting with them in order to move on from the pain. So, I'm not sure, was I a nail here? Not nail. Your brother-in-law absolutely does know what's best for his own emotional well-being. He shouldn't be forced to clear the air until he wants to do so. I completely agree, and Obi needs to have a serious conversation with his wife about her priorities. This was a planned ambush on her brother, and she was in on it. Not a hall. As someone with mobility issues from a spinal injury and headed for a wheelchair, I would be horrified by being trapped in that situation if no one listened to me. He did chase an assault here by respecting his wishes. It's not like he could just leave. They wanted a captive audience regardless of him and his feelings. It's completely disrespectful. Not a hole. It seems like out of everyone, you are the only one who actually cares about Jason and his feelings. Everyone else just wants what's best for themselves, including your wife. I understand she wants her family back together, but this is not the way to do that. Her parents made their choice, and now they must live with the consequences. It's understandable that they couldn't take care of him, obviously being elderly. But to completely stop seeing him after a life-altering accident, there are way halls for that. If Jason chooses to never see them, that is his choice, not theirs, and certainly not your wife. She's being completely selfish. Jason is lucky to have you in his corner. I think you made a right choice to slam the door on them. Now they know how it feels to shut someone off. They had a nurse helping them with all the heavy stuff. It was just that they were having a hard time adjusting to all the new changes. And yes, I get it takes time for something like this to become your new normal, but certainly not impossible. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole, slash are we the a-hole, for not letting my boyfriend's mom put animals in our farm? I'm 20 female and my boyfriend is 21 male. We have been dating for over two years. Back in late 2019, we started renting a house together and the house happened to have a small farm. We didn't use the farm at first, but eventually we cleaned it up and put some sheep on there and we have a sheep dog as well. My boyfriend's mom is in love with the idea of farming. However, their house doesn't have the capabilities to do that, but she often comes and visits our farm. When we got our sheep, she was going to buy a couple herself and keep up there, which we didn't really want to happen, but it never came to an actual idea, so it wasn't an issue. We got a calf a couple months ago, and I fell in love with it. We bottle fed it and raised it. However, it unfortunately passed away a few weeks ago from unknown causes. My boyfriend's mom bottle fed it a few times as well. The other day, my boyfriend's mom was over here and asked if we would ever get another one. We told her possibly when it's a bit warmer, and one that was already off the bottle. She said, well, how about you all get one and I get one? We told her we didn't really want to do that because a calf can be a lot of work and expensive, so we just wanted one. She got upset and said, I will take care of it. And we said, you're going to come up here every day and feed it and come in the middle of the night if it gets sick, etc. She got really quiet and that was the end of it. My boyfriend's dad messaged us a couple days later and said his mom was really upset about it because she wanted a farm. He also said, you were willing to let her get a sheep, why not a calf? Sheep are not as much work as cows, and we never really let her get a sheep. That's fine, 
but this is our farm that we take care of. She wouldn't be the one taking care of her calf. It would more often be us, unless she was up here, and we really don't want her up here every day even if she was willing to do that. Which she's not. My boyfriend is with me on this completely as he knows he would be taking care of whatever his mom gets. Are we the a-holes here? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Seriously? She should be on her husband's butt about moving and getting a farm so much. Or be content with admiring your farm animals, for which I'm sure she can always visit on a sensible manner. Yeah, she clearly doesn't understand the pain of caring for these animals. Best if she buys her own farm and leave Vopi the hell alone. Not day hole. Livestock require care. Fencing, hay production or purchase. Dewormer, counted every day so you can't find one if it's missing. Grain purchases, salt and mineral blocks and so much more. You don't just go, I want a fluffy that someone else takes care of. Unless you are paying board at the boarding facility. And that is usually pretty exclusive to horses and also usually $300 plus a month. She wants a farm? Her and her husband needs to figure out the move necessary. As in move to a farm and do the work themselves. Um, not the hall in the context that she's being entitled and has no right to demand anything from you guys. But you can't just get a calf. It will be so lonely. Cattle are really social creatures, and no amount of human interaction will replace another bovine for company. Getting two would be much kinder to them, and if your boyfriend's mother is willing to pay for one and split costs with you, it might not be a terrible idea. Plus, it's a backup if you guys are out of town for whatever reason. The only reason we had our last calf is because it fell into our laps because it was a neighbor's and its mother rejected it. We have thought about getting two for ourselves, just not for having one. It would essentially be taking our resources, and if she were to sell it, then she would keep the profit when it has been our money keeping it going. And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.